Hello friends and beautiful people. Today we are planting asparagus and we're going to talk about what I do that might be a little different um, and that's the only reason why I'm doing a video. I know there's a lot of videos about planting this and planting that but uh, asparagus is one of those things that's just not as common and it should be. Um, asparagus is a superfood and I want to talk a little bit about why before we uh, show you how. So one of the things with um, asparagus see my little friend here he is full of fiber so he has insoluble fiber that is going to help with uh it's going to act as a probiotic it's going to feed our gut bacteria and do all kinds of wonderful things for our gut and then we've got the soluble fiber and the soluble fiber is going to help with um, the bad cholesterol oh goodness hang on here i've got my gloves about to blow away there we go so then um, it's full of antioxidants. It's full of different vitamins. So we've got A, C, E, K, uh, folic acid, and I'm forgetting something, potassium. Full of all kinds of good stuff for you. It actually promotes reproductive health because it is uh, it works on your increasing your blood flow. And then it also helps um, cleanse your urinary tract, which is why sometimes we have what we refer to at our house as asparagus pee um, that just that odor that you get when you urinate and all that is is that is cleaning out your urinary tract and with that in the ancient days it was actually used as an aphrodisiac because it promotes libido and uh, because in that increased blood flow also helps um, with different things <laughs> i don't i don't can't think of a politically correct way to say it so it's actually just it it also reduces fatigue uh, by increasing the uh, and it, it it that odor that you get when it's cleaning out your urine is actually where it's getting rid of the excess ammonia so it's a really great for that um, it's let's talk about where to plant it when you plant your asparagus it's a commitment um, asparagus is a perennial and it usually lasts a good 15 years it gets three foot deep roots on it so you want to make sure that where you're choosing it is where you're using it I um, we did move some at our old farm and it was not fun we had to go down about two feet on the roots usually they're about three uh, it hadn't been established that long for it to be uh, to have the full roots on it but just know that where you plant it is where it's going to be uh, unless unless you've got really strong arms and are really up for digging it all up and not losing any we ended up we did lose some when we did ours so there's two ways to plant it we can plant it from the crown which is what i just showed you or from the seed that it produces so we've got some crowns here that we um, we ordered from uh, a company online when this uh, matures now this is uh, called a two-year crown so really if this had already been in the ground this is the year that i could have harvested from it for us it's going to be next year though and we because we want to wait and not harvest spears until they're about the size of a pencil and we want to get them young and tender like that we don't want to let them get really big if they do um, they tend to get um, a little fibery on the end and a little a woody I guess is a better way to say it so we're only gonna harvest this guy until June and then after June we're gonna let it get the the ferny palms on it and go to seed and we're gonna leave it alone until next spring usually asparagus is one of the first things that starts coming out of the ground in the spring so when you see your asparagus coming up it's like yay it's spring so we want to do this in well-drained soil and my pH here is six and a half to seven which is absolutely perfect for asparagus and when you are fertilizing it um, right away what you want to do is you can do the phosphorus and you can do the potassium but don't do the nitrogen until you've got the green fronds coming up so I usually just wait and whatever you do do not use weed and feed asparagus is um, a member of the grass family and that's how we're going to treat it anything that uh, you can do to grass you can do to this but do not use weed and feed 
So here's what I do when I plant, and this is um, what I feel is different than a lot of other people. In a raised bed, I even did this just a tad different. What I've done is I've done, here's my hand flat. This is a hill like I do for a potato with a very deep side on it. So see how my hand isn't even coming up to the top of it? I do that on both sides. And then what I do is I take this little guy, here's the one I had, and we're gonna set him on top of the little hill. And then we're gonna spread his roots out and we're gonna straighten them out just like you were playing with your hair and just trying to make sure you got all the knots out of your hair. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna come back over this. This is me doing this with one hand and we're going to cover all of this up with dirt. Now, you don't want these roots to get sunburned. You've got to do a really good job covering them up. But as I have found that asparagus likes to have its own little hill. So when I do it in a raised bed, I just do like one little hill. I don't do like, this is going to be a whole row of just coming up. Because what I'm going to do is here in about a month, I'm going to put some leaf compost or mushroom compost on this entire garden. Uh, we're getting a, a truck of that. We've got some stuff going on here at the farm that uh, I haven't really shared with anyone yet. And that's going to allow me the opportunity to spend more time out here. And I'm so excited I can't stand it. So if you're wondering what that is, I have resigned from my big girl job in the food industry. The food industry is broken. It needs fixed. It can't be fixed. They're not trying to fix it. They're just making it worse. Um, and I'm just at a point in my life where I want to spend some quality time with my family and with my husband. And I want to enjoy myself. Um, we are hopefully in a position where I can spend all of my time here on the farm and in, in the quilt shop. And to us, money is just a tool. And as long as we have enough to pay our bills, that's all we care about. We don't need fancy new cars or new clothes and um, you know, $400 tennis shoes. We, we, that's just not us. So we are um, taking a, a step in faith. We know God had his hand in putting us here. We are 100% confident of that. And he just keeps pouring out blessings on us. And when we were praying about this and and um, trying to figure out what our next move was, I can't tell you what he did, but I will tell you that he did it. He said, Cynthia, this is it. Do it. And that was my husband also. So um, we are, as of the end of May, 100% on the farm and in the quilt shop and we're excited about that and we feel very blessed so i just i just tear up when i think about all the blessings that have been put on us since we've taken this step with this farm and and he's just increased our territory and given us our, our goal is still to feed hungry people and by making this move i'm actually going to be able to hopefully go over to the food pantry on mondays and volunteer and take food over uh, food fresh food, um, healthy food that we grow and to help nourish bodies and make sure that the people who are needing nutrition are getting nutrition and not empty calories. So please pray for us as we take this step out. And until next time, friends, be blessed and be a blessing.